Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. It's been a while since I made a video because I've been rather busy. I made the score for a theater play using live tape loops. I did another destruction loops, so that's even more tape loops. And I traveled to Toronto and played a show there. And there will be videos to all of these adventures, if you want to call them that. But today I've got the last show of the year. And I am rather tired after the past month of constant travel and playing. And I want to kick myself a bit. And to do that, I've completely switched up my live set. And I'm going to play with stuff that I've never used live before together. Let's have a look at my bad, bad idea for a live set. The heart of the setup is this nuclear instrumentation modular rig. And in there is the PAR 2020, the Beast of Princeton. I made a full video on that. This is a lock and amplifier and can do so many things. It can do bass lines, it can do melodies, and it can do crunchy sounds. It's a beautiful thing. Right next, we've got the Boxcar Integrator by Stanford Research Systems. This is basically an analog window function generator. And what I use it for is rhythm creation and as a pulse generator. Because I'm running a clock from the Seattle Amada Plumbeter, which does bass drums, some rhythms, and some harmonies. And it sends a clock to the boxcar averager. Now, that clock is then being taken apart by the internal clock of the boxcar averager, and you get all kinds of micro variations, which sounds glorious when you run those into the Genera 1564 bump pass filter over here. You can do the classic test equipment Hyatts, and you can do yeah, you can do little plings and plongs and bass drums. There's a lot of variation to be had. And it just sounds really, really nice, I think. The plum butter also processes a little dictaphone over here, where I've recorded some piano loops and some synthesizer loops. And they provide atmosphere, context, and give the raw sound of the test equipment and the plum butter a bit more poetry. The last instrument in the setup is brand new and it's probably the worst idea that I'm taking it out today because I've only spent yeah, a few minutes with it today, but I really enjoy it. It's the Herbs and Stones Liquid Foam. This is an analog groove box, a banana synthesizer, and it just sounds rather lovely and raw. And it's very simple, but that is perfect because I've got no time to learn the depths of I haven't even checked out how this really functions. This is the Neon Hack, which is a desktop reverb and delay, and also a compressor. So this is very complex, but I just love the sound that I get by simply turning the knobs and running it on the aux of this Spirit Folio Mixer. I'm using this old Spirit Folio Mixer because I think it sounds very good, it can handle the levels of the test equipment very well, and it has got a really nice equalizer. So this is like, yeah, a very nice model of a cheap analog mixer that you can still get for like 70, 60 bucks or something. So I'm gonna rehearse now and then it's up to packing up and going over to Patchpoint to play the show and try out this bad idea of playing a show with a setup you've only rehearsed once on the day of the performance. waiting for the taxi, but it's the busy time of it, so I'll be late.
reopening parties of Patchpoint. <laughs> so I'm kind of the inventory right now. Um, but for me, this is rather amazing because when Darren told me that he wanted to do a modular store for banana synthesizers, like the most, oh, this way, left, you can go with synthesizers. I was like, oh, oh yeah, are you sure about that? And I was having visions of him being ruined within a year and that it didn't turn out that way is so beautiful and amazing to me. And it's all part to you being here, being part of the whole thing, buying those instruments and playing them. That was a small part of the show. I'm back at home and I've got a cold, as you can hear. But the question is, was it a bad idea to do a full set with instruments and music that I hadn't played before? I would say, no, I think it was a good idea because it gave me that extra energy that I needed to perform well at the show. As I said before, I was tired and choosing all new instruments made it exciting for me. And that excitement translated to a better live show than if I had just stuck to what I usually play. Because yeah, it made it more dangerous and that equals fun to me when I play live. So I should be juggling knives or something? Nah. Just making music on unknown instruments is right now enough thrill for me. I was able to put the instruments I hadn't used at all before to good use. The liquid foam added some acidy bass lines and some percussive blips, which worked really well in the whole context because there was no resonant filter in the whole setup. And this does resonate very well. I will definitely be doing a video on this. I think it's really fun synthesizer and so thank you to herbs and stones for sending me this to play with the neon egg planetarium this is such a fun tool it is definitely a characterful effect i don't know how much of it is its vintage retro appearance but i feel this is not subtle at all this is meant to sound bold and big and I still have to figure out all the sweet spots and there's some interesting stuff you can do by playing the reverb settings and you can pitch stuff around which feels cool but it's definitely now time for me to read the manual on this and try it out more it worked well in the context and it provided space to the rather small room I was playing in well at least for a concert venue it's big for synthesizer space 
Thanks Neonag for sending me this, I'm having fun. I realized how tired I was after checking the footage, because as you might have heard in the beginning I forgot to plug in the microphone and even today I forgot to turn it on, so this is the second time I'm recording this. So this is typical, tiredness equals errors. But luckily not so much with music. I was able to completely tune myself to the room and the parts where I felt ah I need to change things up and go somewhere else or have there's something not working. I figured it out after a few minutes and I managed to I think do a good show in the circumstances. And I enjoyed it and other people too, so that's probably the most important thing about that. And if I were to give a word of advice from the whole thing is challenge is good and if you feel you're stuck in a rut or you're over preparing stuff sometimes it's good to let loose and try to challenge yourself if you are sure what you want to tell because whatever instrument I play whatever idea I have of the setup there's always something in myself that I want to do and want to create and there's a certain way I structure my music. So that translates to basically any instrument I feel. Yeah, so if you get something like that, it's easy to mix up and try out new stuff in front of an audience and that's probably the easiest way to get better at what you're doing. And that's it for this video. I'll be putting up the rehearsal and the live show on the Patreon so you can listen in how it all developed and how it all sounded. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below or visit the subreddit. There will be more videos soon, as soon as I've got my voice back. So, see you in the next one. Bye.